So in case you missed last week's video, I got the custom trim milled and prepped the plywood for insulation here in the not so tiny house. So now it was time to finally get these walls installed. And after bringing the first batch of plywood over from the shop, the first thing I did was get this track saw workstation set up. And in this case, this is a Craig ACS adaptive cutting system. And to make sure my pieces were fully supported while we worked on these long plywood panels, I went ahead and built this support platform, which was really, really handy. And I attached the platform to the ACS table with these extension brackets and then the other end of the platform is supported with a Craig track horse. And as you'll see, this workstation was used for basically every task from cutting the pieces to length to pre-drilling and countersinking the screw holes and there were 1,500 of those so that took a while to making scribe cuts and cutting around outlet boxes and windows. So if you're gonna try your hand at plywood walls like these, I would not even attempt it without a good track saw setup like this one. So we actually worked on this guest bedroom with its darker kind of less aesthetically pleasing pieces first. And this room would be kind of where we learned the process. And we did this whole part of the install completely off camera just to remove some of the stress from the situation, but it was still a pretty rough experience just kind of working out the order of operations and figuring out how we were going to install these panels because there were just so many little details to kind of figure out. And I messed with multiple spacing options, multiple screw options, and debated on whether or not to countersink the holes, which I really didn't want to do, but we ended up doing because it looked better. And this all really added to the stress of the install, but by the time we were finished with this room, we had a really good workflow down for the most part. And so next we could move on to getting the master bedroom prepped for installing the panels. So the installation process started by setting up a laser line, and this line gave us a reference point for the top edge of the panels on this gable end wall, and would also show us where to install the light rail trim for the LED strips on the side walls. And while I was setting up the laser, my wife, who was amazing enough to help me with this whole plywood process, was getting the foam weather stripping installed on every stud and rafter, basically everywhere a plywood edge would end up. And this weather stripping served a few purposes. First of all, it blacked out the framing, so the reveal between the plywood panels would look more clean. And probably most importantly, the weather stripping air sealed the panels to the framing. And typically with a wall covering like drywall, the taping and mudding process would take care of this. But since I was intentionally leaving gaps between these pieces, I needed another solution and this weatherproofing seemed to work well. So once the weather stripping was in, we could finally start hanging some plywood. And we started by mounting a straight board flush with the laser line on this gable end wall. And as you'll see, we could butt our plywood directly up against this board while installing this first row, which made keeping the row straight much easier than just trying to visually line it up with the laser line, since that would have been about eight feet up in the air. Next, I could cut a piece of length with the track saw and I used the stops on the ACS to make sure the panel was square to the track which is a really nice feature with this kind of table setup. Next, I set up a vertical line with the laser so we could position the edge of the panel centered on the studs. And this first board obviously needed to be cut around this window opening. So we got the piece positioned and then I could mark the location of the window by tracing on the back face of the panel. To cut the opening, I headed back to the cut station and laid down a few bench cookies so I could cut the opening with my jigsaw without cutting into my platform. And I wasn't trying to get particularly close to my line here since I would be flushed trimming the plywood to the window jams later on, and so this cut went super quick. Next, we could pre-drill, countersink, and pre-drive the screws in these panels. And to drill the holes, we used the jig I showed in last week's video and used a self-centering drill bit to basically mark the hole locations. We could then countersink the holes with my all-time favorite countersink bit, which has the absolute must-have feature of this non-mar depth stop. And this feature was pretty much a requirement on this project as I wanted all of these screw holes to look consistent. Finally, we could partially drive the screws and having the screws already in place made it much easier easier when getting the panels mounted. And speaking of the screws, I use these inch and five eighths Spax stainless steel deck screws, and this extra threaded area helped to pull the plywood super tight to the framing. Also, since these are stainless steel, they are not magnetic, so pre-driving them was also very helpful for that. Once the screws were in, I could get the first piece mounted on the wall, and I made sure the top of the panel was tight against our alignment board, and the edge of the panel was lined up with my laser line, and then I could drive in all the screws, making sure not to overdrive them, just to allow a little bit of room for adjustment later on. 
Next, we repeated the process for the other panel nearest this window opening. Again, cutting it to length, cutting around the window opening, and pre-drilling and driving the screws. And the only difference here was that the top edge of this panel needed to be scribed ever so slightly to match up tight with our alignment board. I'm not really sure why we had to do this on some of these panels. I'm guessing things just might have ended up ever so slightly out of level or out of square, but scribing the board with the track saw was super easy. To set the reveal between the panels, we used paint stir sticks as our spacers. And I picked up this tip from my buddy Mike from Modern Builds. And these paint stirrers work great as spacers since they're a consistent eighth inch thick and they're rough enough so that they don't slip out as easily as something like plastic wood. Next, it was onto our first board with a few outlet boxes to cut around, and I had purchased this awesome little tool for helping me mark these outlet box openings. But unfortunately, the tool didn't work with these USB outlets I installed next to where the bed will go in this room. Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Instead, I had to go with the old school method of measuring and marking, and as you'll see, I managed to screw that up later on which is why I typically avoid this wherever possible. Anyway, I roughly marked where the boxes intersected the panel and then moved back to the cut station to get things marked out. And thankfully I hadn't actually installed the boxes on the other side of the bed. So I could use those to trace out the openings and then I used my jigsaw to cut the openings. And one tip here would be to figure out how much coverage you have with your switch plates and fixtures because I know I aired on the side of way too tight on these openings, which meant I usually had to trim these areas multiple times before I got them fitted which as you can imagine was pretty annoying. Once the piece was finally fit, I got it screwed to the wall and then we repeated the process on the other side and this panel once again required multiple fittings. The last two pieces to install on this row were the pieces that met up with these adjoining walls. And I made sure to measure the width here in multiple spots so I could account for any inconsistencies in our framing when cutting these panels to width. To make this rip cut, I used a longer Craig track. And as you'll see, this panel had already been cut previously, but with the outlet box locations accidentally flipped around, thankfully I was able to rip off that area and still use this piece, which was definitely a relief considering each of these panels cost about 30 bucks. We repeated the process at the other end, and with that, our first row was installed. Next, we could fill in the top row, which was a little tricky since it had to be cut to fit the roof line. Thankfully, we didn't have to get this absolutely perfect since the ceiling panels would cover up half an inch of space. So with that, it was easy enough to measure and then cut to those measurements with the track saw. And we did use the drilling jig on these pieces as well, but instead of referencing off of the top edge like we did with the other panels, we referenced off of the bottom edge just to keep a nice, consistent screw space. Finally, I could install the piece using more paint stirrers as spacers and lining up the edge with my laser line. I repeated the process for the other panels and thankfully I was able to get these pieces out of the off cuts from the ceiling panels, which I'll show next. Once all these pieces were installed, we could call this first wall complete and move on to the ceiling panels. So we once again started in the middle and worked our way out on the ceiling. And this meant the first piece needed to be notched around this ceiling pan box. And after measuring, I first cut the panel to length and then I could mark out the location of the fan box. And I once again used my jigsaw to make this cut, but I did back bevel the horizontal cut just to make it a little easier to fit the piece up against the fan box. Once the piece was notched, we could get it installed, and I also set up another vertical laser line here for reference. Also, let me tell you, this was pretty tiring work since not only were we working overhead, but as you might be able to see, this insulation was really stuffed into these cavities and kind of bulging out a little bit. Thankfully though, with a little bit of brute force, the panels snugged up really nicely. We repeated the process for the next two panels in line, once again, notching around the fan box, and then we got to another piece that met up with the wall, and I used the long track again to scribe the piece to the wall and thankfully all of our walls were straight enough to where we didn't have to cut any curved scribe lines which would have definitely been a little trickier to get looking really nice and clean. From there it was really just rinse and repeat for the ceiling panels and I was so glad to finally get this insulation covered up as I've been bumping into it for months and getting itchy and that is just super annoying. We finally got to the last two end pieces and the only difference on these two pieces was the fact that we needed to feed the low voltage wire for these LED strips through these panels before installing them. And this low voltage wire will connect the LED strips on either side of the room so they can both run off of one transformer. And thankfully we were able to install all of the ceiling panels without forgetting any of the wires, which I was definitely worried about. 
With that, the ceiling was done, so next we could get the light bar trim installed. And once again, we called on our trusty alignment board here and got it mounted so the trim piece would rest on the board during installation. Next, I used my laser measure to take a measurement for the length of the trim and then cut the trim to length with, you guessed it, the ACS. And if you watched last week's video, you'll know that my plan was to attach this trim with pocket screws. So next, I could pre-drive a few two and a half inch pocket screws before moving the board into place. We got the trim positioned, making sure it was spaced evenly at either end because I had the same kind of reveal there. And then I could drive in the pocket screws, making sure to hold the trim tight to the alignment board. I added all of the screws and then I could remove the alignment board so we could get started on these wall panels. So for the most part, installing these panels was just more of the same, cutting the pieces to length, pre-drilling and driving the screws, and then installing the panels, again starting in the center of the room and working out. And one note here is that we added spacers between the trim and the top edge of the panels just to again maintain that consistent eighth of an inch reveal. And we decided to work towards the gable end wall in this case, probably <laughs> to avoid dealing with that outlet box, and I once again scribed the last panel to fit with the longer track. Once that was done, it was back to my nemesis, the outlet box, but thankfully I could use my little gadget to mark the location of the box this time. So as you can see, the way this thing works is you add one half of the tool to the outlet and then stick the other half, the locator plate, on the wall. I once again used my jigsaw to cut the hole and I found that drilling a 3 8 inch hole at each of the corners not only made cutting the opening easier, but it also matched up really well with the shape of the outlet box. And after cutting the opening, we got the panel installed and then finished up that wall in the same way. So with that, this far wall was done, and I've gotta say, I am pretty proud with how clean all of our reveals ended up, as it took a lot of forethought to make that happen. We repeated the process on this other wall, and there's really not much else to say that I haven't already covered, so let's just let the time lapse roll for a minute. With that, this master bedroom was pretty much done, except for some trim where the ceiling panels meet up, as well as at the floor, of course, plus flush trimming around the window, which I'll show in a bit. But overall, I was really happy with the way this plywood was looking. And I know a lot of you guys in the comments on the last video weren't really into the look, but I personally think it looks super cool and very unique. I think this super light birch looks very clean and modern. So next we moved out here to the main kitchen and living room, which we actually saved for last as I kind of figured we'd have gotten our installation methods down by this point. And thankfully that was definitely the case. We got this whole ceiling done in about two half days. And then we got these extra long trim pieces mounted. And I did have to cut the drywall here in the kitchen area to fit the trim as I had purposely left it long because I didn't know exactly where it was gonna end up. But that was easy to do with a utility knife and I used the dominoes I had cut the mortises for in the last video to join the trim pieces. And of course, my SD card filled up right as we started installing the plywood on this wall behind me with all the windows, but the installation here was really just more of the same, roughly cutting the panels to fit around the windows, plus we had a bunch of outlets to contend with on this wall. Now, this wall was a bit of a different story since I had obviously this giant sliding door to deal with. And because this door was actually sized for two by four framing instead of two by six framing, which we have here, I had to pack out the area for the extension jams and these little scraps of this plywood were perfect for this. And luckily there was a huge pile of these two inch offcuts from the wall panels since we cut those to length and I got them tacked in place with a narrow crown stapler. Once that was done, I could get the actual extension jams installed, and these were more strips of plywood, but in this case, they were longer pieces, and I installed them with the same screws to match the rest of the plywood. Then I could finally get to installing the plywood on this wall. And as always, I started in the center of the room, which meant I was starting with these small pieces above the door. And again, I really lucked out with my offcuts here, and I was able to get two of these pieces out of each of the ceiling panel offcuts. And after drilling, countersinking, and pre-driving the screws, I could get the first piece installed, which went really smoothly. 
I continued on down the wall installing more of these small pieces and then I was in the home stretch with these last few larger pieces. And this left panel went in easily enough, but we really struggled on this panel kind of close to the door here. And after getting it fitting perfectly, spending like 20 minutes cutting this thing to size, we finally noticed that our screw pattern didn't line up since the ceiling height changed in this hallway so I couldn't really use my jig. So I had to scrap that board and recut it, which was super frustrating and I actually called it a day at that point. The next day I started fresh and got the new piece fit installed and could move on to the last two pieces around that entry door, which were really easy since there will be trim to cover the edges around that door opening. The very last thing to do for the installation of the panels themselves was to add some more screws here around the edges of this big door opening. And my wife and her dad showed up right as I was installing these. And let me tell you, my wife and I were pretty excited to have all of these plywood pieces installed. And all in all, this process took almost two months, which is crazy. I was looking back at footage and we started this in October. Now it wasn't quite done yet though, as the edges around the windows and this door opening were still pretty ragged. And to clean these up, I got a flush trim bit installed on my trim router and went around the inside edges of the window openings. This was pretty stressful routing as any big screw up here would require me to replace the entire panel since there isn't gonna be any trim to mask those areas around these windows. Thankfully though, the routing went pretty smoothly and with a little bit of sanding, I should be good to go. And I'll be coming back to finish these edges and the windows themselves with some Total Boat Halcyon later on. I repeated the process around the windows in the bedrooms and around this big sliding door. And then I could finally vacuum up all the sawdust we generated by cutting this plywood before stepping back to admire our work. And overall, this plywood installation honestly was probably one of my least favorite parts of this build so far. A close second to installing all the tile in the bathroom, but I am so happy with the way the inside of the tiny house is looking with these walls installed, especially in this main room. It's just super bright and airy with the vaulted ceilings. It's looking awesome. Next up in the series, I will be building the custom kitchen cabinetry, which I am super excited about finally getting back into the shop. And I'm gonna be using some really cool touch to open bloom hardware that I've been nerding out on. And I'll show you guys everything about that in the next video in the series. So if you don't wanna miss that video and all of my future videos, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that notification bell. Also, I'll have links to all of the tools and materials I use down in the video description below. And last, I wanna say a big shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon and my YouTube members. Thank you guys so much. There's been a couple more y'all joining on lately and I really appreciate that support. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.